Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government continues to invest billions of rands in the country's rail industry, but passenger rail services continue to struggle. Irma Fender tells us more about these developments. Hi Irma. Hi Cheryl. How much is government investing in rail services and what is the focus of that investment? Well, New Transport Minister Fakile Mbalula told us that the government's investing 38 billion rand over the next three years in metro rail. So that would be the uh, passenger rail service for the poorest of the poor, actually. And what they would be doing is buying new rolling stock, putting in new infrastructure, new signaling systems, new purway, anything like that, upgrading the stations. So uh, there's a big focus on trying to do that over the next three years. And uh, of course, a part of that would be new rolling stock, and that would be 600 new trains to arrive for the Metro Rail service. Uh, of course, those um, bright new blue and white trains. And uh, 22 of those have already been delivered, most of them up and running here in, um, in Gauteng. Another focus would probably be Gauteng train as well, but not such a focus as would be Metro Rail. So there's an application in to extend the um, Hau train, so-called Hau train 2, um, with National Treasury. No funding has been approved yet, but that would add about 146 kilometers of rail and about 19 stations to our passenger rail services. Theft and vandalism continue to be a problem at Metro Rail. Uh, it's quite a problem because Metro Rail suffers from this new, uh, suffers from a lot of crime and theft and vandalism on the system. I mean, as soon as new van, um, signaling system was actually put in, it gets stolen. There's cable theft, rampant cable theft, and it often leads to accidents or derailments, for example. They've lost around 50% um, of their passengers over the last four years, and that's actually millions of passion trips e each year that actually just gets lost because um, the trains take a very long time to travel. They travel at a very slow speed. Sometimes we have accidents, as I, as I mentioned. So we have a problem in terms of Metro Rail not living up to what it should deliver. And a big problem with that is actually just pure crime. It's criminal elements within the system. Uh, SAPS has indicated that they're not willing to look after process infrastructure, but that PRASA must look after its own infrastructure. So that is quite a problem. Um, the biggest union within PRASA, the United National Tr Transport Union, has actually called on government to deploy the, the defense force on the system to try and look after the infrastructure as the metro rail is being modernized. Otherwise, there's no point. I mean, as soon as you put something in, it gets stolen. So that's quite a big problem that uh, metro rail faces, and it doesn't seem like there's quite something concrete on the table yet to deal with that problem. In Gauteng, the Gauteng Management Agency is also looking to increase non-fare revenue. How is it planning to do that and why is that important? At the moment, the operational costs for the Gauteng is basically covered by fare revenue. Between 90% to 105% of that is actually covered. So that's uh, faring pretty well compared with international systems. Very few international systems, it seems, actually cover their own um, all their costs, in other words, maintenance costs, refurbishments costs, plus operational costs. So there's a, there's a big problem for Hartrain in terms of their non-fair revenue, which they actually think they've missed one big trick if you speak to the Hartrain Management Agency, and that would be non-fair revenue. They would say that they haven't uh, gotten quite all the uh, revenue from this source that they could have managed to do. So we're talking about advertising, we're talking about property taxes, etc. So when you talk to the to the GMA, they would say that they were looking at they're going to look at property and property taxes for how train two. So what we have in a few countries abroad, for example, is that we would put a uh, government would put in new public uh, uh, infrastructure, public transport infrastructure, and then we would see that property prices around stations would typically rise and increase, and then government would tax that increase in property prices. Um, to the benefit of the public transport system to try and pay it off quicker and to make it a more uh, uh, profitable venture. So that's not happened yet, but um, when you speak to the GMA, they say they will definitely do it for Gautrain too. They will definitely have a talk about property taxes and property rates. And I think maybe in anticipation of that, the um, GMA has formed a task team with the city of Tswane and some property developers around the Centurion station to see if they can uh, cash in on some Non, more opportunities for non-fair revenue around the Centurion station. Because if you look at all the stations, of course, Santon is really mushroomed, Rosebank is really mushroomed. I mean, you're talking uh, retail, you're talking flats and apartments, and you're talking head offices, but the Centurion station hasn't really seen that development. So this would be the ideal opportunity for them to do this as a flagship opportunity to see what non-fair revenue could they could possibly generate. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.